Hi everyone, welcome to InfoCraft. Today we are talking about Krom of Hyboria from the law of Conan the Barbarian. Krom is the perfect concept of a deity for the works of Robert E. Howard. He is the chief god of the Cimmerians and is worshipped by the bulk of the Cimmerian people. Krom does set himself apart from other gods throughout mythology because he punitively despises all those who pray. Krom does not entertain players, and he certainly does not help those begging for his aid. Krom sees prayers as a form of weakness, and Krom has nothing but contempt for the weak. Interestingly, Krom does not define weak versus strong from the perspective of losers versus winners. To Krom, someone who is soundly defeated but is willing to fight for himself and take a stand, to be a noble person of honour. Results are not what counts for the great indifferent Krom. Actions and character mean the most to him. From the Conan tale, Queen of the Black Coast. The god Krom lives in the Iglofian Mountains of Chimeria. He has been there for thousands of years, and he only offers the Chimerian people two benefits. He can aid them in the development of their sword fighting process, and he may support them in attaining a fighting spirit. Beyond that, Krom merely observes and opts not to use his vast powers to intervene in the lives of mortals. Chimerians learn quickly of Krom's seeming indifference. It was useless to call on Krom because he was a gloomy, savage god and he hated weaklings. But he gave a man courage at birth and the will and might to kill his enemies, which, in the Cimmerian's mind, was all any god should be expected to do. From the Conan masterpiece, The Tower of the Elephant. In this quote, the latter words are quite revealing. Was all any god should be expected to do. This is Howard speaking directly to his audience, and it reveals a theme prevalent in most of the author's work. Only through self-determination, strong will, and a desire to do things on one's own can success of any level be achieved. Howard had very little interest or belief in most institutions. He found them to be self-serving and fraudulent. A person only has to rely upon an attitude commonly espoused by Conan himself in various tales. Such lessons might not have a moral underpinning for the Sumerians to follow, but it certainly delivers critically important advice to them. Life in the Hyborian Age was a brutally harsh one. Inclement weather, famine and invasions from pillaging tribes were threats all must face at all times. Better to be reliant on the self than pray to an unseen, far-removed and disinterested god. In Howard's work, Conan exclaims phrases like Krom and his devils as a curse. He is called upon when trying to gather one's courage. Sumerians believe he is the cause of earthquakes, including the one that sank Atlantis. Sumerians are his chosen people, and because he has bestowed them at birth with the power to strive and slay, the courage to go on, survive and vanquish adversity, he considers any further pleas to be an insult to those gifts. Krom disdains worship and is offended by flattery, so even prayers of praise and gratitude will be punished. The only way to show devotion to Krom is through action. Though building a monument of a mountain struck by lightning, Krom's emblem is permissible. In the canonical stories, Conan remarks in conversation that it's best to avoid doing anything which would draw Krom's attention, as he hands out only dooms and trouble. Krom only directly intervenes in Conan's life once, unasked, to save a middle-aged Conan from a dishonorable death at the hands of a malevolent magician. Krom is saving him, presumably, for a more honourable one involving overwhelming odds, heaps of mangled corpses and rivers of blood. Conan is aware of the intervention and afterwards sheepishly makes his first sacrifice to Krom since boyhood, doing it secretively for fear of others thinking he has gone religious in his old age. In Conan the Barbarian, 1982, Krom is referenced similarly to in Howard's works, with one exception. During a theological discussion, Conan says that when he dies, he will go in front of Krom, who will ask him the riddle of steel, and if he does not know the answer, Krom will mock him and cast him away from Valhalla. The riddle of steel is not mentioned in Howard's stories, though it may reflect Krom's similarity to Odin. Krom is a unique deity in the fantasy genre. He is a brutal reflection of the harsh realities of life, offering no comfort or solace. Yet, for the Cimmerians like Conan, he embodies the unwavering spirit of self-reliance and the will to survive in a world indifferent to their struggles.
His absence in the visual aspects of the stories reinforces his role as a concept rather than a character, a force that shapes the world of Conan. In the crucible of Crom's indifference, warriors like Conan are forged, testaments to the unyielding human spirit that finds its own strength in a world devoid of divine handouts. Thank you for watching. For more content like this, please like and share our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the content, let us know what you want to see next in the comments down below.